Do I think my cookies are star baker worthy? No. <laughs> hanging out with Mia. We are getting our day started. I already ate my breakfast, but now it's time to take my vitamins. And I love this brand called Care Of. They make personalized vitamin packs. And what I love about it in particular is that you put all of your preferences in, like the things that you want to do, whether that's like digestion or like if you need like better sleep or you want to have more energy throughout the day, they make a customized pack of vitamins for you. And then I also love that they put a quote on every single pack that you get. And today's fact says, the US has more museums than Starbucks and McDonald's locations combined. So I love these, I take these every morning. And then I also take Pro DHA 1000. I take Glutamine. And then I also take Digest. I actually take Digest with every meal because my stomach is not right because I'm gluten-free and dairy-free, but I don't always, you know, practice it as well as I should. And when I am like totally gluten-free and dairy-free, I feel much, much better. And I've been that way for like the past three weeks now. But yeah, so my woo-woo doctor, she's like a Western nutritionist and practices Eastern medicine as well. She's amazing. She's helping me like get my gut back together. So we are completely gluten-free, dairy-free, tomato-free, potato-free. And I feel like I'm missing one thing right now, but yeah, we're really working on my system. So today, I'm super excited because I'm gonna try to bake with you all. I love Christmas cookies and like just Christmas decorating in general, but I am the world's worst baker. So we're gonna try this. And I found a recipe on Pinterest that I think is gonna work. So fingers crossed this works for us because normally when I bake, it's usually a fail. But don't worry, I also bought a pack of pre-made dough as well, just in case, you know, the baking is an epic fail. But before we get into baking, I bought a bunch of shoes from Sorel, and I want to do a little baby haul with you all. So let's get into that first. I just got dressed. I'm wearing my favorite Reformation top. These are my go-to sweats. I wear them all the time. They're from Nike. I own them in several colors, but I'm having a little bit of a you know, fashion, and by fashion I mean loungewear crisis, and I'm trying to decide if I should wear this Billie Eilish shirt, the black shirt that I have on, or my Kith half zip up, so let me know in the comments which one of these do we like. God, I have a shoe problem. If you follow me on TikTok, you've probably seen me do a bunch of Sorel videos because I love them so much. These are the Brex Heel Lace boot. Ooh, they're cute! Look at that vibe of the heel. I love that you can see the detailing on the back that says Sorel. These are really cute. So we're gonna try them on. Oh my gosh, this took forever. They might stretch out, but they feel a little tight still had them on for like I don't know five minutes and they feel like they might stretch out and I really love how they look so we'll have to see on to pair number two this next boot is called the Brex and it is in black noir and chalk and they are just such an interesting vibe like I kind of like them a lot and we'll see how these ones fit oh my god is my foot gonna go in oh Right off the bat, I don't love these ones as much as I do the other ones. I still think they're kind of cool. 
and a little vibey as well. They definitely remind me a lot more of like a Doc Martin style boot. They feel like they're too big, but also too narrow at the same time, which is unfortunate. On to the next. These are called Out and About. Out to the boot if you live in the upper UP area. And these are really truly like a wintery boot. They're so cute. I think they're really fun for winter. These are definitely like more of like a snow boot versus like the other two pairs felt more like fashion boots, but this is like fashion meets winter. So it's a good combination of the two. I love all of the colors together, the green and the black and that millennial pink. They just go super well. And then I also love that back statement that just says Sorel. These are super cute. So let's try these ones on. I have like a little baby zipper and the baby zipper reminds me of like when you're in elementary school and you couldn't wear shoes that had that had laces so you just had to zip them up <laughs> I feel like a child and I love it these are so effing comfortable oh my god these feel like they're wearing sneakers but they're waterproof they're kind of cool I like how they feel a little futuristic and they're so seriously I cannot tell you all how comfortable these are they fit my feet really well they don't feel like they're pinching anywhere so if you have a wider foot like me these are definitely kind of a cool pair. I like them. I think I would walk Mia in these all the time because I love to have boots that are specifically made for walking her. This is another Brex boot. It's a Brex Chelsea boot though this time. And this is in white and black, but opposite of the first ones that I tried on that were like black on top and white on the bottom. These are white on top with a little hint of green and then black soles, so let's see. Ooh, so cool! <laughs> I think they're really sick. They're a little bit hard to put on, not as hard as the other boots. I want to like this style, I really wanna love it, but I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. I don't know. I really thought I was gonna love these, but I just don't. I feel like you need to be a jizz, a jizz, no, not a jizzelle, a gazelle to wear boots like these because they're just, they don't, I don't think they look good with my body type. So definitely not going to be keeping these either. Okay, this is the last pair. Woo! I'm like getting a little glistening over here because it's hard to put these damn shoes on. So this is the Joan Uptown Lace in the color Iced Tea. Ooh. Oh, these are the infamous ones that have Sorel on the bottom, and I love how that looks. When you take the picture, you can see the Sorel logo. I think that's so cute. They already kind of look like they've been worn a little bit, and I don't know if that's like the type of leather that this is. They are waterproof as well. I love that they have the zipper so you don't have to mess with the laces. I just think that makes it easier to put them on in the long run. I love these the most. I really like the wedge fit. They're really, really comfortable. The one thing I don't love is that you can see there's already quite a bit of scuffing on them. And I just don't know if that's how they're supposed to look or if they're supposed to be a little different. But I really, really like them a lot. The last ones, chef's kiss. Definitely a winner for me. I'm just so torn though, because I feel like there's three pair that I really like. I can't keep three pair. I don't have room for three more pairs of shoes or shoes right now. So ah, yeah, I need to make some decisions and figure out which pair makes the most sense for me and like what's in my closet right now. But let me know in the comments which one you like the best. My assistant just said, you're such an Aries and I have no clue why, but she is right. I give off total Aries energy all the time, like 24 seven. But what I need to talk about is this bag. <gasps> this is my Christmas present to myself. It's a Jacquemus bag, I think, or something. I don't know how you pronounce it, if it's French. I have a thing for French things lately. And ah, I'm in love with it. But I wanted to do a quick fit check because we're gonna go to lunch and then we're gonna go grocery shopping and then we're gonna make the cookies with you all because we need to eat first. So I'm wearing that Reformation top. Nike sweats and some slight 
Dad Vibe sneakers from Adidas. But it's the bag for me, y'all. It's the bag for me. <laughs> Oh my god, we were sliving at lunch, y'all. It was so delicious. I got this amazing salad that had steak and arugula and spinach, and then my favorite Brazilian fish stew. Oh, it was so good, so good. I'm finally home. I got all the ingredients that I needed for these vegan, gluten-free sugar cookies. Let's hope that it goes well because I hate baking and I'm so bad at it, like so bad. So anyways, these are from Delightful Adventures. She is this beautiful curly haired black woman. Her name is Gwen and her recipe calls for a bunch of interesting ingredients. So it calls for gluten-free flour. That's the flour for flour, one for one type of flour, sugar, vanilla, dairy-free milk, cornstarch or arrowroot starch, vegan butter, and baking powder and salt. And then I'm gonna to try to make frosting too. The first thing that I have to do is preheat the oven to 350 degrees, get all of my ingredients together, and then start mixing and bake them and then decorate them and all of the other things, so. I literally bought this rolling pin just for this video. I don't know if I'll ever use it again. <laughs> In a medium bowl, add the flour, cornstarch, baking powder, salt, and whisk to combine. Okay, I need, oh shoot. Do you need a whisk? Yes. Put it into a bowl and then whisk to combine and set it aside. And then I need another bowl. I'm gonna need two bowls for this. I'm gonna go get another bowl. See, this is why I hate baking. It's just so technical. You have to measure everything out. And I always feel like I'm gonna mess things up. And I almost always do. I like to cook like how I'm creative. I like to just add things in and taste until I think it's perfect. And you just can't do that with baking. So anyways, let's get to measuring and put the stuff in the bowl and <laughs> move on. <laughs> half a cup of butter and this is the what is it called earth balance yep, earth vegan balance. buttery sticks <laughs> sounds appetizing so it calls for half a stick of butter and then ooh, our timer's gone off means that uh, we are ready to bake but we're not ready because we're not prepared yet so <laughs> um anyways half a stick of butter and half a cup of organic sugar and then i'm supposed to whisk it no whip it with an electric beater, which my brother bought me one for Christmas a couple years ago because I actually asked for one and I don't know why. So I have one, which is good. But anyways, I'm gonna mix those two things together for like six minutes or something. I don't know, long time. I just feel so overwhelmed. Like I'm just gonna F this up and they're gonna be terrible and it's just gonna be a waste of time. I hope that's hot enough. It tastes buttery. This is Now we beat. Let's see if I can put this together. Oops. Maybe. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh my god. I don't think I put these in correctly. See, this is what I'm talking about. I just am like so bad at this. 
Oh my god, did I break it? I can't get it in! <sighs> That's what he said. <laughs> Seriously, this is... Why isn't it going in the hole? <sighs> Help me! Natalia had to fix these for me. We're gonna try again. Hopefully the second time is the charm. I don't know, maybe this isn't soft enough? I'm gonna like try to stab or something first. See, but now all the butter is stuck in here. I don't know. Let's try again. Just calm thoughts. I can bake. I'm a good baker. <laughs> Not really. My mom is also a terrible baker. And I remember <laughs> one time she tried to make brownies. And she didn't cook them through. They were raw. So she decided to finish them in the microwave. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. They like, tasted awful and they were as hard as a rock like you could throw them in the ground and nothing would even like come off so if that gives you any indication of how much baking i learned growing up it was zero <laughs> this is <laughs> i don't think it should be this hard is it supposed to be this hard so the technique of mashing it down and then like mixing a little bit seems to be working we're kind of getting to the consistency I think we're supposed to be at, but we got to do this for like three minutes. Okay, we made it through step two. I didn't think we were going to do it, but we did it. Whew, I need a, I feel like I need a drink or something. This is stressing me out. Okay, step three. Gradually add the flour mixture to the butter mixture and mix on low speed with your electric mixer or with a wooden spoon until sticky dough has formed. Is this everything? I feel like I'm missing something. Four teaspoons, where's that come in? The teaspoons of non-dairy milk. And I don't have vanilla in here yet. Cream. Oh, stop to scrape. Then you add the milk and the vanilla. Okay, we're still on step two. <laughs> Four teaspoons of milk of your choice. Non-dairy, of course. I don't drink milk like that anyways. Two, three, it's kind of dripping, so this might be more than I'm supposed to. Four. And then a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. On to the vanilla extract. Now that we got the bottle open, that's one teaspoon. And then a half a teaspoon. Oh. Maybe a little more than that because it spilled a little bit. Okay, mix again. Now we can actually move on to step three, which means we're gonna be putting a little bit of the flour into the butter mixture. I think I'm gonna do like half a cup at a time just to be careful because I don't wanna mess this up. <laughs> Something might have gone wrong in the flour adding process because if you ask me that looks like ground turkey so it says it's supposed to be kind of crumbly but I don't know we'll see so I have to like mold it together in a ball and then roll it out while I wait for my dough to chill I decided I would watch a little bit of the Great British Baking Show because I want to channel some of my inner baking skills if this goes well I think I'm gonna apply to be on the show just only makes sense, right? <laughs> Honestly, I probably should go on that show called Nailed It, where they try to get people to bake who can't bake or cook, and then they just turn out to terrible co-creations. But I can cook really well. The baking, debatable. It's finally been four hours, and my dough is out of the fridge. It's super hard. I think it's like feels almost frozen, actually, so... I have no clue how I'm gonna roll this out, but we gotta get into the directions and figure out what the next steps are. Also, I forgot to show you all, this is what my frosting looks like. This was super easy to make and was not hard at all. So I'm excited to get to the icing section because I think they're gonna look cute. There were a lot of extensive directions on how to roll out the dough. So we're gonna roll, baby. We're gonna roll. <laughs> This is what my dough is currently looking like. It's pretty hard. I don't know if I need to let it sit out, but yeah, we're gonna try to roll it first. Okay. 
It's crumbling. Why? This is what we're working with. This is not looking right. It's so dry. I can't even like roll it out. So I don't know if I should try to add water to it or just like cook half of it and just see how they come out. Maybe I'll do half a batch first and just see if there's something I can do to the dough or if it's just like a lost cause. But let's just, we're gonna try to roll a little bit less, a little bit less first and then see what we're working with. <laughs> I have a little bit of dough rolled out. There's a pile of crumbly dough over there. This is still kind of cracking, but I'm gonna try just to make like two cookies from this and see what we get. Also, of course, I don't have any cutouts, so I'm just gonna try to make a little tree with a knife. So, fingers crossed we can get two cookie trees <laughs> out of this dough. I think the dough is a bit dry, but I wanna show you the difference between what I did with the dough exactly as it was versus when the dough had a little bit of water on my hands before I put it on the parchment paper because they look entirely different than each other. So let me show you, I'm kind of proud of these. <laughs> well, as you can see, these two here, they're a little bit sad, but they look fine. And then these are the two that I used with water on my hands. So we're gonna bake these and see how it goes. The directions say for softer cookies, bake 11 to 12 minutes, and for crisper cookies, bake them at 13. I'm gonna probably do 10. We have a tray of tree cookies. They're not all the same size, but hey, everybody's Christmas trees are different sizes and preferences anyways. So we've got diversity in our trees. Do I think my cookies are star baker worthy? No, however, I'm really proud of myself for even making cookies that remotely look like cookies and that all stay together. So these are the ones that just came out of the oven. They look pretty good. I can't wait to ice them. They're still a little bit warm, but we're gonna put the icing on and I got some frosting and I think they're gonna look super cute. This might actually be a banger. Ah! They look like biscuits, don't they? I don't know what Paul and Prue would say, but I like them. First batch, second batch. I think we're ready to start decorating. And I have this really cute green, no artificial dyes, decorating sugar from Watkins. So we're gonna put on, I might do them differently, but I might do some like where you just like ice it this way and then put the sprinkles on and then I might outline a few. So let's. Try this out. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, flavor season. Sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, flavor season. Chosen, snow is falling, Elfie's calling, check my list twice, mostly y'all done, sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season, sleigh bells ringing, diamonds blinging, carols singing, favorite season. We have ones that look very abstract and much more kindergarten-y, and then when I figured out this technique, those look much more sophisticated, so I think that's probably my best one. We're gonna add some sprinkles and a plate. All I have to say is it's all about the plating. These look gorgeous. And I put them on one of my favorite boards and I'm in love. They are beyond cute obviously the aesthetic the vibes are immaculate i'm super super happy with how they turned out but the real important thing is how do they taste so let's try one of the ones that we did not plate 
a little baby one. Crunchy, very biscuity. I like it. I think that the batter could use, actually no, I don't think it needs any more. Could use a little bit more sugar, but they're good. I'm eating my second one. This one has more icing on it. The more icing, the better. Oh, this one's also a little thicker. Mia wants a bite. She's whining at my legs. <laughs> Yeah, you want a bite of my cookie? All right, y'all. That's it for today's vlog. It's been a long day. It's already almost nine o'clock here and the cookie endeavor has come to an end. I gotta say, I think they were a banger. So I'm pretty damn proud of myself. Gluten-free, vegan cookies for Christmas. I will link the recipe that I use below. Just note that you might have to add a little bit of water to make the dough stick together the very end. But anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.